Bob Barker, the former and longtime host of the TV game show The Price is Right, has died. Barker's publicist says his client died of natural causes at his Hollywood Hills home. Barker hosted a number of TV shows but was best known as the host of The Price is Right, a job he held for 35 years. He was the winner of 19 Daytime Emmy Awards and also received the Emmy Award for Lifetime Achievement in 1999. He was also known for his animal activism. Back in 2013, Barker paid out of pocket to relocate the Toronto Zoo's three elephants to a California sanctuary. Barker was 99 years old. For more on the life and legacy Bob Barker leaves behind, we're joined by Chris Bumbray, editor-in-chief at JoeBlow.com. Chris, good to see you. Good to see you, too. What can you say? 99 years old, a long, colorful, plentiful life. Of course, it's a sad loss. Nonetheless, he was a trailblazer, an icon as a game show host. What, what comes to mind to you when you think of Bob Barker? Days home sick from <laughs> school because every I, in the days before streaming, right, when I was growing up and I was a kid, whenever we'd stay home from school, I'd be in bed, probably on cough medicine, watching The Price is Right and Oprah. You know, these were just these these those daytime shows that were so iconic. And I think that anybody that, you know, grew up in the 35 year streak that he was hosting Price is White probably has very fond memories of watching it. I mean, I remember even Dane Cook had that really funny routine about how invested he would get watching The Price is Right when he was homesick. Uh, you know, just the, this universally beloved figure. Absolutely. I share those memories of being at home sick or spending the afternoon with my mom watching her beloved Price is Right, a show she still watches to this day. But she described Bob Barker as a gentleman, the, you know, the, the classic gentleman game show host. What do you think made him so special, so likable to audiences, Chris? He always had that twinkle in his eye. You know, he was always extremely well dressed. He was a gentleman. You know, he was very polite. He wasn't the kind of guy that would like swear or, you know, anything like that. He was, there was something very, you know, for lack of a better word, classy about him. But also he would poke fun at himself too, right? I mean, he was famously in Happy Gilmore with Adam Sandler, where they have a fist fight on the golf course. And I remember that being kind of a famous image when I was a kid. He was on Family Guy three times. He was on How I Met Your Mother. He was Bob Barnacle on SpongeBob SquarePants. I mean, he was, he, you know, he, he, he kind of had this, he was like everybody's grandfather, right? You know, the cuddly grandfather figure. And the fact that he loved animals was always so obvious. Everybody always knew that because he signed off every show reminding people to get their animals spayed or neutered. Um, I think the first time I ever found out what that actually meant was because I was watching Price is Right and I asked my mom what he was talking about. Absolutely. I mean, this was a lifelong mission of his to make sure that the animal population was, you know, being helped controlled, specifically in the U.S., a lifelong vegetarian as well. How important do you think it was for the animal rights uh, groups, I guess, to have someone like Barb, Bob Barker in the spotlight sharing this message? A really big deal because the thing is, we th we think of activism now as kind of a thing that everybody does, right? And it's kind of a hip thing for celebrities to do. It wasn't like that in the 70s and the 80s, especially, you know, where people would often get mocked for things like that or for making any kind of political statement whatsoever. So he really did stick his neck out because... Chem chemical testing on animals was very commonplace back then, and he was always outspokenly against that. So he did, you know, that he 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 was he was brave in his in his activism. I think because not and PETA for a long time was a very controversial organization. It still is kind of controversial in some quarters. Um, so yeah, the fact that he was able to to kind of put his reputation on the line and put his money where his mouth was by, as you said, relocating those elephants. That says a lot about him. He also built the new PETA, the new PETA office in, in L.A. in 2014, I think, the Bob Barker building, financed out of his own pocket. You mentioned Happy Gilmore. I mean, of course, there's that famous line, the price is wrong, Bob. I remember watching that kid and just lit up seeing Bob Barker making his foray into movies. To have a career where you spend 35 years as the host of a single TV show, how special is that, Chris? And to see him transition to the big screen. I wonder if we'll ever see anybody of his ilk again, right? I mean, it's that that is just that recognizable. I mean, he really was a household name just by hosting this game show. But he was he was such a genial, charismatic host, right? I mean, he was never overwhelming. He never overwhelmed the contestants. He seemed like the kind of guy who was easy to talk to. Everybody wanted to hang out. He was always very positive. 
you know, he was never negative at all, even when people made huge mistakes on the show and lost a lot of lost a lot of really cool prizes. He had this really calming way about him. And I think that was why it was so funny watching him in, in, in the Price is Right fight Adam Sandler because he was so unflappable on the show. Um, truly a one of a kind guy, though. I don't think we'll ever have another Bob Barker. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, listen, a career that's withstood the test of time and a gentleman nonetheless. Uh, Chris Bumbray, thanks so much for your time and your analysis and remembering Bob Barker. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.